Hi and welcome back to Stuart Gives Photography and we're going to do some more landscape photography today. Now I'm close to home again, I'm less than 10 miles from home and I've found this rapeseed field um, which is just off the roadside so you probably hear the cars going past. Now I hate yellow. Yellow for me as a photographer has always been a nightmare. Uh, quite often shooting in churches and things like that where they've got yellow walls and it creates a horrible colour cast on one side of the face and I've had it another time where I did a church that had got a yellow wall on one side and a blue wall on the other and when it came to editing it was an absolute nightmare so yellow for me has always been just a nightmare I hate it so but today I thought I'd give it a try so I have headed out to this rapeseed field um, and it's beautiful I've picked the most perfect day I've actually come out when the Sun is shining it's very very bright and I've just got the Sun off to my left over here it's not very high in the sky we're still quite early in the morning and what it's doing it's really illuminating the yellow um, fields which makes it look absolutely stunning and I've got it all set with the hill on the left hand side and the tree on the right and the rapeseed is creating a large piece of my foreground. So I've framed everything up. Um, I'm using my um, 50 to 230 mil lens and I've got that set around about 60 millimeters. So I'm getting plenty of this foreground in. And on there, I've also got a circular polarizing filter. I'm not using any other filters because everything's quite well balanced like I said the sun's off to my side so it's it's not having too much of an effect on my shot it's not blowing out the sky or anything so I have got a um, circular polarizer on and I've just turned that just to give the sky a slightly deeper blue look now my settings for this one I've got it set at um, ISO 100 um, f11 because i want to keep everything really sharp throughout the frame and a shutter speed of 40th of a second everything's in manual mode and i focused in on the tree in the distance uh, everything's straight it's all on a tripod and i've set that on a two second timer so when i press the shutter it just gives the um, camera a chance to stop shaking before it takes the shot so i'm all ready for this shot i think so I'm going to press the shutter and see what we get. I did have the two second timer on, we'll put that back on. There we are. That just stops it from shaking and gives me a shot. And that is stunning. The um, the yellow of the rapeseed is really, really illuminated. The, the sun's in a perfect position for it. So I'm going to head around, see if I can find any other shots. Right, I've come off slightly to the right since my last shot. Now, something to remember is I am shooting in a farmer's field here, and this is his um, livelihood. So I'm being really careful not to trample on any of his crops. So I've stayed to all the bits where his tractor goes and the bits around the edge, so I'm not trampling on anything. Now, I found this shot with a single tree off in the distance. Now, behind it, there is a little bit of clutter, but I think in Photoshop, I might try and get rid of that and just give the effect of this beautiful, massive yellow field with one singular tree right in the center of the um, frame. Um, at the end of it so I've set everything up again um, a very very similar shot um, again I'm shooting at f11 um, 40th of a second my my settings haven't really changed because I've not really moved I've only come a few feet and um, so everything's set up exactly the same I've got it on my two second timer well I will have it on my two second timer there we are, ready to reduce any shake. I've adjusted my circular polarizer to fit and I've made sure everything is straight and I'm ready to take my shot. We're gonna have a quick check of that. It's very, very bright this morning. 
That's really nice. I'm going to have a little bit of work to do in Photoshop because one of the branches is just leaning down into some trees in the distance but I can't get much more of an angle to get rid of that so it's going to need a little bit more Photoshop work than I was hoping for um, but I can live with that. So we're going to have another quick wander and see if we can find anything else. I couldn't find any more um, big compositions that I liked so I opted to take a few close-ups. I think this one turned out quite nice. Right, so I've made it home and I've loaded my photos up onto the computer and I've selected this one to edit in Photoshop. So I've loaded up my RAW file into Adobe Camera Raw. Now, <laughs> I have a little bit of a confession to make. I was wearing sunglasses when I took this photo, um, which I usually prefer to take them off because I've overexposed the image slightly. Now luckily there's still loads of tonal detail left in this um, so I can sort that out. It's not a major problem. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do to sort this image out is come to my white balance. Now I want something more in keeping um, with the light that we had and so I'm looking for a white balance around about here. You can do this to taste um, as you wish, but this suits um, my image nicely. Um, next thing I'm gonna come do is come down to my exposure and I'm just gonna bring the exposure down a little bit. That's good. I'm gonna bring my clarity right up, around about plus 40 for my clarity. And I'm gonna do the same with my vibrance around about plus 40 there as well. Now I'm going to come across to my black slider. I'm going to darken the blacks um, just a little bit. And come down to around about there, around about minus 15. And I'm going to come to my whites. I'm going to push my whites back up just so I still get that nice um, luminance in the picture. So that's looking good. All right, I'm going to come up to my detail. I'm going to just bring the sharpening up around about 80. That's starting to come to shape. That's looking good. Then I'm going to come across to my HSL adjustments. First thing I'm going to look at here is my luminance. And I only want to affect the blues. And so I want it to be quite a nice bright blue sky. And so I'm going to Bring that to the right, round about plus 15. That's looking good. And I'm just going to come to my saturation. And I'm going to saturate that a little bit. Come into round about plus 35. So very, very happy with that. So I'm going to open my image into Photoshop. So the image is opened into Photoshop and again there's quite a bit that I need to do here. Um, the first thing being is to straighten it. Now my camera was straight when I took the photo but the field wasn't. It was on a bit of a slant. So I just want to straighten that up. So I've come across to my ruler tool and I'm just dragging that across the top of the yellow field and then I'm going to come to straighten layer and Photoshop will straighten that up. Now there's going to be quite a lot of um, mess around the edge but we will sort that out afterwards. I'm now going to come across to my layer. I'm going to drag that down to create a new layer and next thing I'm going to want to do is get rid of those trees in the background. Um, I was also on a slow um, shutter speed so there's quite a few flies that have shot across the frame so I just need to get rid of those as well. Um, now getting rid of this, um, these trees in the background um, you'll notice that the trees in the background on the left hand side um, are just interfering with that branch on the main focal tree. Um, I could have overcome this by um, moving 
um, and f creating a bit more space between them um, but I didn't want to trample the farmer's field so that was a definite um, no-go so I'll have to do it in Photoshop instead it means a bit more work but it's better that and um, I'm gonna do this by using a combination of the clone stamp tool the healing brush and the patch tool now it's going to take me a few minutes to get this um, right so i'm going to speed this up and um, i'll catch you after i've done that Right, that's pretty good. I've cleaned that up nicely. Um, so I'm next thing I'm going to do is to crop it. So I'm going to come across to the crop tool. I want a nice letterbox crop for this. So I've come to the 16 by 9. I'm going to drag that up. Now I'm going to create the illusion of this tree being really solitary in this field. So I'm going to drag this edge out. I'm also going to drag this edge out. I'm going to try and keep this bottom line towards the top of the field. Bring it up just a little bit more. That's looking good. I'm going to click the tick there. And now I'm going to fill in these edges by coming across to Edit coming down to content aware scale I'm going to drag the edges this out and it's just going to stretch that over Photoshop normally does quite a good job of this I'm just dragging that out I'm just going to drag the top a little bit let go, see what sort of job it's done of that. Just a slight bit more. That's looking good. Slightly more to the left. And superb. So I'm going to click the tick there. Right, brilliant. I'm going to come across to my levels. Anyone who knows me will know that I like to um, increase my blacks on the levels. That's looking good. And increase my whites. That's brilliant. I'm going to toggle that on and off. And you can see that just gives the image a lot more pop. That's starting to look really, really cool. Now I want to create a snapshot here. So I clicked on my top layer. I'm going to go to Control, Alt, Shift, and E, and that's going to create me a snapshot of everything I've done. Now, to finish off, I'm going to come up to Filter. I'm going to open up um, a Camera Raw filter again. Now, I'm going to come up to my Radial filter. I'm going to draw a nice oval shape. I'm going to drag that over the top of my tree. That's great there. Now you can see I've got the feather quite high here. I've got that around about 90. And I've got the outside of the box selected. And then I'm just going to adjust the exposure outside 
of the box I've come down just a little bit and again I'm really really happy with that so I click OK that will open back up into Photoshop and that is my image complete um, I hope you've enjoyed um, this video if you have make sure you subscribe for future videos I've got a really great one coming later on this week and um, that I'm really excited about um, so we'll see you soon ta-ta for now